there, right there, kids dig in. Well, my sister draws these really neat fish, and I had uh, talked to her and I wanted to use them in the background or in one of my videos and in, in, uh, in a game. So I'm going to show you real quick what I do with these pictures. Uh, this is GIMP. I don't use Windows anymore. We're going to take this picture and, and we're going to rotate it counterclockwise. Now I want to try to pull the picture out with a transparent background. So in order to do that, we're going to zoom up in it a little bit. Here's zoom in. Click, click, click. Zoom in here. And we're going to go along the edge. I like to use these pen tools. It's pretty neat, actually. Uh, you can use the Beesler and do the curves, but the reality is she had cut these things out with scissors and they're not 100% perfectly round. It's just the way she wanted to do it, you know? And so my little straight lines, especially as small as the fish get at the end, are gonna work just fine for what I need to do. And you see, I gotta outline the whole fish. You don't have to be terribly precise with it. See, I'm a little bit off the lines now. The idea is to get the basic shape of the fish. And what I'll do is turn the background. I'll make like a mask. Take the background. Well, I'll wait till I get there. Okay. Oh my goodness. It's taking a little bit longer than I thought. I thought it was going to be a little like a little two minute video thing. I got pokey fingers though. It's going pretty quick. Going pretty quick. You probably hear a little bit of noise in the background. I'm in the Philippines, and that's a fan blowing. You have to have fans going 24 hours over here. Okay, now I've got it all outlined. I want to select by path. Now I've just selected the path. Make a new layer. Okay. Now, on my new layer, I want to paint the path. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to reverse that. And I'm also going to paint it. Now everything will turn black. Now you'll see the reason for this. Now I can turn them off by clicking these little eyes. Okay, there they are. And we'll make no selection at this time at all. Select none. But I've got myself two patterns here. I've got a pattern of the outside and a pattern of the inside. And that's going to wind up making a shadow on that fish so it has a 3D appearance. Now we make a new layer, another new layer. I always duplicate my fish. Just in case I mess something up, I've got my original drawing back again. But I'm going to turn that one off and merge that one down. Now, I pick this layer. See my active layer? The one is orange. I've got to make it visible. I'll pick that active layer. Now I can turn it off. Go to my fish layer and delete that active layer. And if you see what happened, it just took the fish totally off the white background. Now I have my fish. Now I'll take and select none again. Select none. I'll take this background and I'll blur it. The blur will allow the black to overflow into the fish. With my filters, blur, I use a Gaussian blur. Let's see, move over to my where I can see it. Where's it at? Oh my goodness, where's it at? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Gaussian blur. And there's one of the areas. 
Now I can see that it's dark on the edge. I'm using a 70 in here. It's a quite large picture to look okay. Now notice what it does. That whole edge has a dark blur. Now if I put that on my fish, it will give it a shadow like it's darker. Now I have to remove the black, the black black. I want to keep the part that's overlapping on the fish. So I pick this area again, the black one. I'll select the black. I will invert my selection. That means I'm selecting the outside, this area out here, I'm selecting. And on this drawing, I delete it. Now, when I select none, you see I've got a dark outline on the fish. The whole way around it's got a dark outline. Now I can intensify that. I can show disappear. Now I can intensify that by just duplicating the layer. Now, we want to drop a shadow on the fish. So let's back out. Zoom out. I pick this layer here, put it behind the fish. There it is behind it. I give it a blur, Gaussian blur. Now, I can take this layer here and drag it off to one side. And there's the shadow on the fish. Now, lighten the shadow up a little bit. There you've got the fish with a shadow on it. Now to look at it and really see it well, we should throw another background down. I put it on white. We'll just look at it against the white. We're not going to employ it in the picture. We're just going to look at the background and see what the fish looks like on a white background. We've chosen that layer, paint the white. Now, you see the fish with a darker outline and with a shadow. As you get rid of the pieces and parts, It'll show what they do. Here's the shadow. Gone. Here's the outlines. So that's your original fish on the white background. But as we add the shadow in the background and the other parts. And that's the one I'm going to use. I'll remove the background and I'll save that as a PNG file. Well, since I've got GIMP open, I'm going to be putting on the background anyway to look at it. I figured I might as well do that on video here. Here I've opened up one of the backgrounds my sister had sent, and here's my fish I had. I've already got it on a bunch of different layers. I don't want all the layers, so I better take it and uh, I'll take my image and I will merge the visible layers. I don't have to expand it. I can clip it to the same size as this image. Now, let me select my fish. Edit copying. My drawing. Edit paste. Now let me turn that floating section, section into a new layer and I get a giant, giant fish which I have to resize because it was much bigger than my paper was. Resizing isn't hard to do. Always oh, zoom out to look at this. Look at look at what actually happened here. That's a whoop. Zoom out. I didn't realize my fish was so big. Um, but there's the fish. So if we take and uh, resize that, you see the resize tool I hit up here. You can either put numbers in or you can grab it by the corners and shrink it down. So let's take and shrink it down. 
and once it to the size you want. And if you notice, you don't have to follow the rules 100%. You can have a little short squatty fish, or you can turn it into a long one. You can play with it a little bit. We will chain these to keep the proportion within the reason and scale it. Now, there's the fish on the background. And when these are actually being used, they're much smaller than this, but this does show the fish on the background. That's what I really wanted to do. And we make another layer to get that uh, dotted lines off of it, new layer. Okay, get rid of that white layer. And merge this one down. Now if you notice, I still have the fish in the background separate. So I can do more with it if I want to. And we will zoom up on it a little bit. Zoom in. There it is. On a background. Now what I do also, I won't go back to where the fish is, but when I'm making my fish, I'll also take that shadow and I'll take one picture of it, or say one image, with a shadow over here. Then I'll reverse the fish and I'll drag the shadow down and have another one. So I have a fish facing right and one facing left that are going to be identical except for the fact the shadow will be moved. I can probably illustrate that here if I back up. There's the shadow. If I take that shadow and I move it over here, I can take the whole image. Let me merge everything together the visible layers, clip it to the image. Now I can take that whole image and flip it. And you see the shadow is on the same side as the shadow here. So I can actually take this fish giant fish, so we'll resize it. And you have to remember that if you scale an image that's not on there, that you back up, back way up and try to find where that image is at because it is there. You just have to find it. So there's one. There's the other one. We'll resize this one. Oops, see what I didn't do? Now we'll take and resize this one. And we 
we've got two fish with both the shadows in the right location. You can do almost anything with GIMP you can with Photoshop. There's a few little tricks you can't. But uh, you can figure a way around it. Where something might say emboss, you say, well, I can't emboss it like Photoshop does, but I can put that embossing effect. All you have to do is drop a shadow into it, and it looks embossed. Or you can do the same with adding ridges and uh, outlines and shadows. and uh, You can do about anything you want to it. It's a pretty neat program. And this was made, these things were made the same way as that uh, example I just showed you. But it's hard to get them to match up where they can kiss. There's the kiss. Let's see if I can do that again. There, right there, kissed again. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe. And while you're at it, look at the squares above and choose another video. Enjoy yourself and thank you.